With the recent launch of weapon crafting in Destiny 2, Guardians now have the ability to craft up to 42 weapons. But with so many options, it can be a bit overwhelming. But this ultimately poses the main question, which weapons should you craft? Welcome back to the channel, I'm BraveX Hero, and today we're going to be ranking the top 10 must-craft weapons in Destiny 2. For each weapon on today's list, I will be explaining how many frames you need to acquire to craft said weapon, where you can start acquiring these frames for each weapon, and ultimately, the best perks for both PvP and PvE. So if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to click that like button, and if you're new to the channel, then consider subscribing for more Destiny 2 content. But with that, let's get into our first weapon. Starting off today's list, we have the Raid Pulse Rifle, the Insidious. This is an aggressive 4-round burst pulse rifle, and to craft this weapon, players need to complete 5 red border copies of the Insidious. This will then unlock the pattern from Triumphs. Now to acquire red border versions of the Insidious, players need to complete the Vow of the Disciple raid. This weapon drops in the second and final encounter of the raid. When it comes to using the Insidious in the Crucible, players can really see a lot of benefit out of the perks Arrowhead Break, Accurize Rounds, Enhanced Rapid Hit, and Enhanced Adrenaline Junkie. By choosing Arrowhead Break, this now brings the recoil direction to 100, which is completely vertical for the Insidious. The reason you want to go for 100 recoil direction is that when utilizing aggressive 4-round burst pulse rifles, it's necessary to get the best possible recoil direction. This will ultimately help you with weapon control. Now the Insidious does suffer with a poor reload stat, but with enhanced rapid hit, players can see a substantial boost to the stability and reload of this weapon. For the final perk, players can always go with Adrenaline Junkie. This is going to give the Insidious a rampage feel to it by giving it a slight damage increase for each target defeated. But if you kill an enemy with a grenade, this will automatically give you a max stack on Adrenaline Junkie. As for PvE, you're going to want to go with the ultimate grenade combo. With perks like Enhanced Demolitionist and Adrenaline Junkie, this is what Bungie envisioned for Synergy. Getting kills will charge your grenade, and when you use that grenade to get kills, this will grant you bonus damage and refill your magazine. Coming up next, we have the Explosive Personality. This is a wave frame grenade launcher that can be acquired by completing three red border copies of this weapon. This will ultimately unlock the pattern from Triumphs. Now to acquire red border copies of the Explosive Personality, players have to complete Vanguard PsyOps missions, and at the very end of the mission, players have a chance to receive a weapon from the Season of the Risen loot pool. Keep in mind that you can always purchase this weapon for a chance to get a red border weapon. When it comes to choosing a set of perks to craft, players can easily create a god roll for both PvP and PvE, so today's recommendation will satisfy both PvP and PvE enthusiasts. For starters, players should go with the perk Smart Drift Control. This is going to boost the stability, recoil, velocity, and handling of the explosive personality. In the next column over, you're going to want to choose High Velocity Rounds. This is going to boost the velocity and reload of the explosive personality. In the next column, for both PvP and PvE, players should aim for Enhanced Auto-Loading Holster. This is going to allow your Explosive Personality to be reloaded while it's stowed away. In the final column, you need the perk Enhanced Disruption Break. This is a great perk for anybody who wants to use the Explosive Personality as a Primer type weapon. By selecting Disruption Break, when you break an enemy's shield, this now makes them more vulnerable to kinetic damage thus making this a great perk for grenade launcher swapping. Up next, we have the Ragnahild Deed. This is a kinetic aggressive frame shotgun. This is probably one of the easiest weapons to acquire on today's list. To acquire a craftable version of the Ragnahild Deed, players need to follow the quest steps for reshaping Enigma, and by doing so, this unlocks the weapon. Now, when it comes to shotguns inside of PvP, players should always favor range and handling. When it comes to selecting a barrel for this shotgun, players should go with Rifled Barrel. This is really going to boost the range stat of the Ragnahill D. Next, you want to choose the perk Accurize Rounds. This is going to further boost the range stat of this weapon. Now getting into the perk in the next column, players should go with Enhanced Auto Loading Holster. Okay, okay, hear me out. Yes, I did recommend Auto Loading Holster on a shotgun. With the special ammo restriction in PvP, players are only getting one round per special brick. But by utilizing auto-loading holster, this can really help players reload their shotgun while it's stowed away. 
thus saving them time from reloading, plus it allows players to keep their primary weapon out much longer. Now in the final column, players can really get a lot of use out of the perk Elemental Capacitor. This is going to boost the handling of the Ragnahill D when you have an Arc subclass equipped. Look guys, with Arc getting a revamp next season, this perk is going to see its usage shoot up. And this is why I highly recommend players to get their god roll now. As for PvE, you can go with the same set of perks, but in the final column, rather than choosing Elemental Capacitor, players should go with the perk Demolitionist. This is going to boost the cooldown of your grenade with each kill you get with the Ragnahill D. The likely suspect immediately became a fan favorite for both PvP and PvE players. This is an energy rapid fire frame fusion rifle. This is yet another easy one to acquire. By simply completing the Witch Queen campaign and doing a few side quests, you can easily unlock this weapon. Now I'll be suggesting the same role for both PvE and PvP. The reason for this is that you can easily use a single crafted version for both activities. Since this is a rapid fire frame fusion rifle, players should aim to boost two stats, stability and recoil direction, both of which will manage the spread of your bolts when firing this fusion rifle. When choosing a barrel, players should go with arrowhead break. This is going to boost the handling and recoil direction. When it comes to choosing a battery, players should go with particle repeater. This is going to boost the stability of this weapon. Now, in the next column over, the best choice is going to be enhanced firmly planted. This will further boost the stability and recoil direction of the likely suspect when you're crouched. Now the perk in the final column really takes this fusion rifle to the extremes. By choosing the perk Enhanced Successful Warmup, this is going to boost the charge time with each final blow you get. The likely suspect saw an immediate boost in usage at the beginning of Witch Queen, and with it still being a top tier option for craftable weapons, I really don't see this fusion rifle dropping any lower on today's list. Our last shotgun on the list became a fan favorite overnight. We have the Energy Shotgun Without Remorse. To acquire this shotgun, players need to acquire 5 red border copies of this gun, and this will unlock the pattern from Triumphs. Now to acquire red border frames of this weapon, players need to complete the containment event, and in the final chest, you have a chance to get this weapon as a drop. Or you can simply purchase this weapon from the Crown of Sorrow. To keep this shotgun simple, we're going to keep the same barrel and magazine for both PvE and PvP. For starters, players should aim for rifled barrel, and this can be paired alongside Accurized Rounds or Assault Magazine, both of which will boost the shotgun's overall performance. Now in the second to the last column, for both PvP and PvE, I highly recommend Hip Fire Grip. This would allow players to be more accurate from firing from the hip. But the perk Enhanced Threat Detector is a great solid option as well. This is gonna boost the handling, reload and stability when in close proximity of your enemies. Now in the final column, for PvP, I would go with either 1-2 Punch or Elemental Capacitor, both of which are solid options. For PvE, you can choose any of the options in the final column, all of which are great and will benefit you against PvE enemies. With the launch of Season of the Haunted, Bungie reintroduced the Ostringer. This is a 140 RPM kinetic hand cannon, and by the way guys, this is probably one of the best hand cannons in the game at the moment. Now to acquire the Ostringer, players need to complete 5 red border copies of this weapon to unlock the pattern. Now to acquire red border frames of this gun, you can easily open up chest on the Leviathan utilizing opulent keys, or you can purchase it from the Crown of Sorrow itself. When it comes to choosing enhanced perks for this weapon, the PvP and PvE roles are extremely different, the polar opposites of each other. For PvP, players should aim for small bore and ricochet rounds, both of which will boost the Ostringer's range, stability, without sacrificing any of its base stats. As for the perk in the second to the last column, you have two solid choices from either Enhanced Snapshot or Enhanced Eye of the Storm. Pretty much, I guess it falls back on where you want your benefit. Snapshot will help you out when aiming down sights, and Eye of the Storm will help you when your health gets lower. As for the final column, the best option is going to be Enhanced Rangefinder. This is going to increase the Ostringer's zoom magnification, thus boosting its overall aim assist. Now for PvE, I would recommend players choose the same barrel and magazine option, but rather than choosing Snapshot, players can really benefit from choosing Enhanced Outlaw. This is going to boost the Ostringer's reload speed when you get a precision final blow. Now in the final column, you can either go with Enhanced Rampage or Enhanced Demolitionist. 
By using this perk set, you can really reap the rewards when going up against low tier enemies. Our next weapon on the list easily is one of my favorites. The Callus Mini Tool has become one of the most deadliest SMGs in the game. To acquire this SMG, players have to complete 5 red border copies of the Mini Tool and this will unlock the pattern of the weapon. Now you can easily acquire red border copies of this weapon by utilizing opulent keys or purchasing it from the Crown of Sorrow. Getting into perks, regardless if you are in PvP or PvE, you need to go with a ranged barrel. Majority of sidearms and SMGs in Destiny lack in range, and by choosing perks such as full bore, players can get a boost in the range department. In the next column over, players should still have range as the main driver of this weapon, so the best choice is going to be accurate rounds just to add a bit more range to the weapon. In the second to the last column, regardless of your activity, players should go with the perk Enhanced Threat Detector, since you'll see a huge benefit to your reload, stability, and handling when you're surrounded by enemies. In the final column, your best choice is the perk Enhanced Incandescence. If you'd like things to explode, this perk does it for you. Look guys, I've always hated the original Callus Mini Tool and the Mida Mini Tool, but with perks like Enhanced Incandescence, this only makes this weapon fun, but super deadly in both activities. If you ask any Destiny 2 veteran what the best sniper was in Destiny, majority of them would have said Beloved. Well, with the launch of Season of the Haunted, Bungie reintroduced the Beloved into the game and now players can craft their ideal god role. Now to acquire this weapon, players need to complete 5 red border versions of the Beloved to unlock the craftable version. Similar to our Ostringer and Callus mini tool, the Beloved is the same way when acquiring red border weapons by either utilizing opulent keys or purchasing one from the Crown of Sorrow. Now let's get started with PvP. For barrels, the best choice is going to be Fluted Barrel. This is going to slightly boost the stability but greatly increase the handling of the Beloved. As for magazine options, you're going to want to choose the perk Ricochet Rounds. This would further boost the stability and slightly boost the range of this weapon. In the next column over, players should go with Enhanced Snapshot. Yes guys, I know it got nerfed at the beginning of the season, but even with the nerf it received, this is still a great option for anyone looking to run and gun in PvP with the Beloved Sniper. As for the final column, you have a lot of solid options, from Enhanced Quick Draw to Enhanced Moving Target and even Enhanced Incandescence. These are all great options, and depending on your playstyle is what you'll end up choosing. If you have a run and gun playstyle, then Quick Draw might be better suited for you. But if you want to see your enemies blow up, then you might be focused more on incandescent. As for PvE, in the second to the final column, I would choose the perk Enhanced 4 times a Charm. This is a great choice for anyone looking to deal massive amounts of DPS on enemy bosses. Now pairing that alongside Enhanced Box Breathing, this is going to grant you bonus damage for precision shots. By pairing both of those perks, this would allow you to fire the beloved continuously and deal bonus damage. Who knew a sidearm would make the list? yet alone be one of the best weapons to craft this season. Our next weapon is none other than the energy sidearm, the Drang. To unlock this pattern, you need to complete 5 red border versions of the Drang. How do you acquire red border versions of the Drang? Well, you can easily utilize opulent keys to open up chests or purchase it from the Crown of Sorrow itself. When it comes to choosing perks, players need to remember that the Drang is a sidearm, and with sidearms, range is always key. So focusing on both PvP and PvE, players should aim for as much range as possible, so the best barrel would be full bore. This would give it a plus 15 to the range. This is necessary, guys. Now in the next column over, players should go with the perk Accurize Rounds. This is going to give the Drang an additional plus 10 to its range. Now in the second to the final column, for PvP, the better choice is going to be Enhanced Moving Target. This is going to boost your movement speed and target acquisition when aiming down sights. For PvE, you can always stick with this perk, or you can always choose the perk Wellspring. But for the sake of not recrafting this weapon over and over, I would just stick with moving target. In the final column, players have a lot of good options, and I mean it guys, a lot of solid options. From damage boosting perks like Enhanced Rampage and Enhanced Swashbuckler, this can really boost the Drang's overall performance in any activity. When you string kills together with any of these perks, you'll see the bonus damage stack up. Or you can always go with the perk Enhanced Incandescent. If you want to see your enemies blow up, then this is the perk you want. 
Look guys, the Drang is a must have weapon for anybody who plays this game. This is a great solid option for both PVP and PVE. Our final weapon on the list is the Kinetic Pulse Rifle Peace of Mind. This is a rapid fire frame pulse rifle and is currently one of the best guns in the game. Now to unlock this pattern, players need to acquire 5 red border versions of this gun. Now to acquire red border versions of this gun, players can either do Vanguard PsyOps missions or purchase this gun with a chance of a red box to drop. Now for both PvP and PvE, players need to focus on stability and recoil direction. With this being a rapid fire frame pulse rifle, players need to focus on perks that will allow you to control the weapon. With that in mind, players need to aim for the barrel arrowhead break. Pairing that alongside ricochet rounds will bring the peace of mind's recoil direction to 88, which almost makes it vertical. But by utilizing these two perks, it does reduce the bounce intensity by 30, making this pulse rifle much easier to manage in gunfights. In the next column over, players can choose either enhanced overflow or enhanced perpetual motion. Both are great for any activity. If you hate reloading, Overflow can give you over 50 rounds in your peace of mind, which can easily snag you 2-3 kills in PvP. Or since you're always running and gunning in PvP, then you can always choose Perpetual Motion. Now in the final column, I highly recommend you choose either Enhanced Moving Target or Enhanced Elemental Capacitor. Personally guys, I think the peace of mind is deadly, and I think everyone needs to get their hands on a craftable version of this gun. But there you have it, with so many craftable weapons in Destiny 2, here are your top 10 must craft weapons. If you have any friends jumping into Destiny for the first time, then help them out by sending them this video. But before you go, if you're curious on which hand cannon is the best in Destiny, that video that just popped up on screen goes over the best hand cannons in Destiny 2. But if you're new to PvP and you're looking to improve, that video on screen now is a playlist of the best tips and tricks for Destiny 2. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. With that, I'll see you in the next video.